Welcome back. We're talking to Patrick Ewa, who is the founder of Ashesi University. He's discussing education. Ashesi has some new milestones we've been talking about. And with a few weeks to the general election, he also talked about what he's looking out for ahead of the polls. Stay tuned. Do you have a, are you going to vote in this election? Uh, do you have a top three issues, Patrick? I, I think everyone should vote, okay. right? Yeah. Um, so, look, the, the, my top three issues are the same as everyone else's top three issues. I mean, really? Look, we, we all want a, a thriving economy, mm -hmm. job creation, okay. and good governance, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when, when, when people say, jobs are important, education is important, the economy is, port is important. All of those things are very tightly connected, right? Okay. The, way, the way we're going to grow the economy is if we have a very well-educated and productive citizenry. The way you get the next job to be created is that the people who currently have jobs are helping companies to grow so that the next person also has a job. Um, and the way all of this works is if you have good governance, you have uh, very low levels of corruption in the public sector, you have uh, efficient administration and use of public funds mm -hmm. to, to do the public projects that enable the private sector. Mm -hmm. So they're all very connected and I see them as actually one issue. Is you, you know, the, the issue we shouldn't is, separate them. The issue is advancement of Ghana. What is your focus for your students? I, I, I have people say the modern university graduate needs a certain skill set and so they should focus on A, B, C, D. W what do you make sure that an Ashesi graduate must have? Is it a sectoral focus, say like engineering or project management or IT or irrespective of what they study, you want them to go out with a certain kind of skill? What's your approach? Our approach is that irrespective of what students are studying, they must have a certain character um, and a certain set of skills. And so character formation and skills are, are incredibly important. The reality is that human knowledge is grown so vast and it continues to grow at exponential rates that no one person can hold all the knowledge that they need in their field. Um, no institution can, can teach everything that people need to know. And so what is really important is that you, you educate people in such a way that they're able to learn for the rest of their lives. And they're able to sort of navigate as knowledge um, is changing. Mm. So that for us is the most important thing that we do at Ashesi. Mm. So you know, say we need people in computing, IT, coding because that's where the world is headed that's where the competition is as against for example 50 years ago when the investment of Ghana was started they just needed people to work in the civil service so uh, mostly people who would go and work at the ministry of finance or ministry of trade well when university of ghana was started 50 years ago we needed people not only for the civil service they just didn't realize that <laughs> okay um we need we need people who are going to work in the private sector absolutely in today's world you need a lot of education in science, in technology, in engineering, in mathematics. Uh, but it is also the case that every society needs um, to educate people who are artists, who are philosophers. Um, you, who Even are, within this developmental context Who are of politicians. We need all of that. Who are lawyers. Mm. You need all of that. Mm. So, you know, I, I was just watching a TED talk the other day, talking, talking about where the modern computer came from. Okay. Like what was the first thing, what was the first programmable machine that people built? Do you know? Probably the abacus. It wasn't, it wasn't the abacus, it was, you know, these music boxes, right, where you could, you have a cylinder with little spikes in it and okay. you can wind it and it oh. plays a song for you. Oh, wow. Right? 
And depending on what you just put in a new cylinder and it plays a different song. So that's programming. That's programming. Mm. And then they use that same concept to program a, a programmable uh, textile machine. So you can mm. change the patterns on cloth. And then they said, well, you know, using those cylinders is too expensive. Let's use paper with punch cards. And then they use those paper punch cards for the first programmable computing machine, mm -hmm. like calculating machine. So in a way, what, what we're all benefiting from now came from a musician and a tinkerer. Mm -hmm. And so what if, we had, if they had said back then, music is not important, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there's lot, there are lots of, you, do, you don't know where the advance is going to come from. Mm -hmm. Today, um, if you go to Silicon Valley, um, if you go to tech companies, a lot of the work that they're doing is inspired by science fiction. So novels, mm. movies, mm. created by artists. And the thing about artists and writers is that they don't, they don't concern themselves with what is here. <laughs> with what is here. They don't really know what the constraints of the laws of physics are. They don't care about physics. And so they just imagine. they just imagine something. They just imagine that somebody can pick up a device mm -hmm. and talk to somebody in a vid video call mm -hmm. thousands of miles away. And they don't care about how it happens. But that artistic mind uh, that conceives something that an engineer in Silicon Valley then sits and says, how might we make that work? Mm. What are the technologies that we would need to know? Wow. Uh, and so, so that's why I, th I think that it's really important to, to do everything. Uh, STEM is important, but you also need your philosophers, you need your artists, mm. you, you need, need writers, writers. Mm. Wow. you need, you you need, need journalists, journalists yeah. right? <laughs> Hence Einstein says, imagination is more important than knowledge. Please ask Patrick Iwa if he would ever consider going into national leadership. By that I mean, Political leadership. I have. That's coming from. I have Jamila, by the way. I have no interest in political uh, leadership. No interest. <laughs> well, I mean, I have the interest in it of a citizen, right? Yeah. So, as a citizen, I care about what the politicians do. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's not something that I'd be good at, and it's not something that. Why, why can't, no, you, can't, you learn, can't you learn it? I mean, if it's important enough, it can be studied. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because, because it's not what you're saying. We train people so that they can function wherever they go. So if... if no, that's... that's okay, okay, let me rephrase the question. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. So I think that... Look, one really very successful politician that we all talk about is Lee Kuan Yew, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Lee Kuan Yew was really passionate about what he did. Mm -hmm. I think that whatever it is you're doing, you have to be passionate about it. And passionate about it, not, you know, people come to me and say, I'm passionate about music. And I ask them, are you willing to suffer for it? <laughs> and they ask me, what do you mean by that? I said, well, if you're not willing to suffer for something, then you're not really passionate about it. I used to be very passionate about engineering. I still am. Mm. And the suffering, quote unquote, that I went through was all the hard studying and the, you know, the, 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 the long hours, mm -hmm. the 16 hour days at work to build something. Mm -hmm. I was passionate about it and I was willing to put in that mm -hmm. sweat equity, right? I'm very passionate about education now. And that's really oh, yeah. where my focus is. You know, politicians, po politics seems like conflict to me. Okay, <laughs> and <laughs> it seems like conflict to you. Yes, and it it you know it's just not something that I would want to spend my you know. But have, have you, have you studied it to the point of knowing that this is definitely not for you, or you because it? I know enough <laughs> to know that you know our current president and and uh, the Nakufado are in conflict right now. In a good way. I mean, they're not in conflict with 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 weapons and stuff. But yeah. but that's a very intense debate, and they're campaigning, and they're going around the country, and yeah. all of this. They're not prepared for that kind of conflict. <laughs> well, 
better them than me. <laughs> better them than you. <laughs> but how how for for a somebody who runs a university, you cannot deny the importance of political leadership and policy in the business environment in shaping the outcomes that you can get. That is true. You're absolutely right. And um, and I think that as a citizen, uh, the work that I do is very uh, supportive and important to Ghana's development. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it is something that is so important that and you, you need people to do that too. Okay. So that's what I'm. So that's what I'm focused on. Mm -hmm. And one day, some of my students will become politicians, and they will have the passion for it, and they will have the ethical bearing for it, and they will have the concern and the compassion to do it well. And and in and in that way, I would have contributed politics. to politics, but not in the direct way that people are asking you to. Not in that. But um, are you concerned about where the world is going generally? <laughs> I mean, let me give it some meat and then you can comment. So I, I feel that the world is not grappling with the, its problems well. If I look at the migration crisis, and it's led to certain kinds of governments emerging, all right? So in Europe, you have even Brexit, right? And then you, you have um, in Germany, in a, a recent election, Merkel's party lost heavily because extreme right-wing type parties were coming in. Then you have the U.S. with Donald Trump and his rhetoric is won as well. So the developed Western world seems to be moving towards a certain kind of leadership response to, I don't know what it is, what are the challenges of the present? There's some sort of nationalist thing moving, going on in the world. I haven't looked at all the countries. And I feel it's brought some tension to the world system. People are not sure how the UN system is going to work. They don't know whether the U.S. is going to do in world trade. They don't know whether it's going to play a role as the leader of the free world and all of those things. As someone who studied and worked in the US, who's now here in Ghana, are you concerned about the, the kinds of leadership that is emerging in, in the Western world particularly? Or the leadership response we're seeing based on all the challenges the world is facing? Uh, look, I, I think that we all have the same concerns. Um, and when I look at what's going on in the world today, in some ways, it's not different than how it's, ever, it's always been, right? So these tensions and conflict, where do they come from? They really come from competition. Mm -hmm. Competition for resources, competition of ideas. <clears throat> and as the world's population is growing, there are more people competing for the resources of the world. Mm. Um, you know, the U.S., elections I think a lot of it had to do has had to do with immigration that's it's, that's certainly the case with brexit um, and you know people people are feeling uncertain and fearful people are feeling well our jobs are moving offshore to other countries so it's all about this competition for resources, whether it's tr through inward migration of people or outward migration of jobs in the, in the United States mm. and, and with Brexit. Um, my big concern is that all of this gets uh, potentially more severe over time. Uh, if the World Bank's estimates are correct, the population of Africa is going to grow from 1.1 million to about 2.5 million in 35 years or so from now. Billion, you mean? I mean billion, 1.1 billion to 2.5 billion. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, a billion more people. Hmm. And if the economies in Africa are not thriving, mm. they're not flourishing, you're going to have massive immigration. Yeah. And most of that is gonna head north to Europe, okay? And, um, that's going to sort of increase the pressures there. Uh, the folks there are going to feel under pressure and, uh, and you'll see more of these kinds of reactions. And so what we really need to do is we need to figure out a way where the economy works for everyone, where economies are growing and where they're growing in a sustainable way. Um, I think that democracy 
is one way to deal with the competition of res for resources and also the competition of ideas. Mm. And so we all need to figure out how to strengthen democracies and keep them stable because the alternative is actually um, a violent conflict. Mm. But I think we're sort of, you know, the good news is that, you know, Brexit happened without violent conflict. They went through an electoral system yeah. uh, and voted. Um, and we just have to ride this wave as it goes. But, but Bernard, I mean, the answer, the short answer to your question is yes, I'm concerned about it. I guess. But I don't have the answers, all the answers. Thank you.